Welcome everybody to Thousand Eyes. I see one of you is already a fan with the orange color. That's great. And uh, unlike some of your other presentations, you'll have an audience here, as you can see. These guys are pretending to be working, but they're all in reality just listening to what's going on here. So I can see some heads turn. Uh, this is probably not your typical office that you come into, so you'll see some crazy stuff here. Most of it should not be reported, and the good stuff should be. So once again, welcome to Thousand Eyes. We're excited to have you guys here. Um, just a show of hands, how many, how many of you have actually got some exposure to what we do, like maybe product demo or so on? We have a few people that have looked at Thousand Eyes. That's great. And um, do you guys have a sense of what we do? Does everybody have a sense of what we do? Cool. So I'll be introducing the company in the next 15 minutes. And then in the 15 minutes following that, we'll go into a very quick product overview. The agenda is in front of you guys. So uh, it, we're trying to keep the sessions really short and just cover specific things in each session. So I'm Mohit Ladd. I'm one of the co-founders and CEO of the company. Um, and I'll be talking about the introduction to Thousand Eyes. So very quickly, the founding story for Thousand Eyes, the company was founded by Ricardo Oliveira, who's uh, sitting somewhere out, out there. And myself, we started in Jan 2010. Both of us worked at UCLA on our PhDs. Uh, we focused on internet routing, modeling complex behavior, writing papers that nobody really read as much. So it was good fun stuff. Uh, one of the things we saw as we wrapped up our theses were some major problems in the network performance management space that really bothered us. Uh, primary thing being that the products that we saw out in the market were just really bad products. They were not designed well. They were not really doing what they're supposed to do. And they were products that were almost 10, 20 years old. So we had this drive where we felt that there was a need for much better products, much better technology, and to improve the whole sort of network performance management space. We also realized that a lot of these deployment models for solving problems were very complex, involved uh, not only expensive solutions that were being sold, but also professional services on top to actually implement, them, uh, implement these solutions. So it's pretty nasty stuff. And then uh, the pricing models around these solutions were very CapEx heavy. So these were the three key things we found which we believed need, needed to be changed. And that was sort of the premise of Thousand Eyes. Uh, we also came across a very constantly evolving IT environment where things were changing drastically. People were starting to adopt cloud applications, and suddenly the entire IT landscape was shifting to be more hybrid cloud on-prem sort of, uh, solution. And so this clearly needed uh, a new generation of solutions, uh, a new generation of technology uh, that would solve these problems. So our goal when we put Thousand Eyes together was to build cost-effective, very easy to use solutions that can actually solve real hard problems. And so that was the, the primary driver of Thousand Eyes is build something, work on the really hard problems, and build something that actually can help the users and make them happy uh, in terms of using the solutions. <laughs> a, a bit more detail into uh, the timeline just to give you guys a quick overview of what we're talking about from a length of time. We uh, got started in a living room in Mountain View, which is not very far from here. This was in Jan 2010. The initial funding we got was from National Science Foundation, so a little bit of money that let us quit our jobs. <clears throat> I put this as a milestone on the timeline where Michael joined us as employee number three, and this is a milestone because, as, as some of you know, as a startup, the founders are almost always delusional, right? So you think you're building something which may or may not work. <laughs> but the day you hire somebody else is when you really realize that somebody else is as delusional as, as you or you're actually onto something. So to us, this was really a milestone, uh, getting one person to buy into our vision. And, and we almost got him to quit his PhD, but we eventually sent him back to wrap it up. In Jan 2011, when we worked, uh, the three of us worked for our first rental product, we got some very early customers, Verisai and Equinix Priceline. These were really good customers. And uh, one of our beliefs is we support our customers. So, since Jan 2011, I've been using Priceline for everything I do in terms of uh, you know, going out, flights, hotels, whatever it is. Um, I be a bit, I'm a bit careful bidding on flights after some experiences, but uh, it's still fun. The other important milestone is we moved to San Francisco. We found Mountain View quite boring for our taste, so we decided to move to something more exciting and create an environment where employees get a good all-around lifestyle. I was curious, yeah. know, how did you acquire 
those three customers so early on? A great question. So we had built a product which was focusing on DNS, on solving some pretty interesting DNS problems. And what we did was we measured stuff to their domains, and we went into meetings which they had no idea what Thousand Eyes was, but we were able to give them insight into what's breaking in their environment. We could actually tell them more about problems they've had in the past than they actually knew. And so selling to them was, was not really hard. It was more data driven. It was more around uh, just showing them what we can do. And then they bought into our, our broader vision of what we want to do go ahead, going ahead. So I can't stress enough how important it was to work with these early customers to define the product going forward. So it's, we've been very customer driven. Um, October 2011, we raised our first round of financing with Sequoia Capital. Um, March 2012, we actually converted that into a Series A. And then we officially launched at GigaArm Structure earlier this year in June 2013. But uh, out of all these events, the most important thing in the timeline is today. We're, we're here with you guys and we're excited to be here to uh, share the technology with you guys and get all your criticism in the off-camera hearing that we'll have later. <laughs> <laughs> Quick. <laughs> quick overview on the problem that we're trying to solve. So you guys know this. This is the enterprise from 10 years ago. Branch office is connecting through a corporate backbone and going on to the corporate data center, which is hosting a bunch of services. Fast forward to today, this is what, and this is real data from one of our customers where if you look at this, these are your branch office networks, or this is your corporate network. This is the point where you are exiting to the internet and then taking this complex sort of internet route. And then these, the green nodes, are the data centers belonging to the cloud providers. So you're really looking at three different network segments, which is the enterprise, the internet, and the cloud application provider, if you're an enterprise. And if I abstract the, the figure out to this Mickey Mouse diagram, that's what you're looking at. And every performance management solution that we're aware of focuses on one of these segments and cannot connect all of these together. So our objective is to you know, solve these problems across the th these three different network segments. And the three problems we see is that when you are an enterprise connecting to a cloud provider, you're working with two different entities, and neither entity actually sees the entire picture. There's also a big disconnect between application performance and network performance. And so we want to be able to tie these together. And then as a process, every time you have a problem, you can't just walk up to the IT guy now and tell him to fix it. You actually have to open a ticket with a cloud provider. There's finger pointing going on. There's no transparency. So we want to be able to fix these three things by basically breaking these boundaries that exist across these network segments and treat them as one. And that's really the mission at Thousand Eyes is we want to treat everything as one network and be able to understand where the problems are, no matter whether they're in your environment or they're outside your environment, and bring full transparency into this. The three problems that I, I translate are the three key things we're trying to address. The first component of our technology, and we'll go into details in, uh, in the later half of the demo uh, going forward, but there are three key components in our stack that are really important that we'd like to highlight. One is the deep path analysis, where we treat these different network segments as one segment. And this is a really interesting piece where you're able to isolate performance issues to specific routers or interfaces, even though they are in the cloud provider's environment or they could be in the internet. <coughs> and that gives you the ability to really understand what segment of the infrastructure is misbehaving. So this is an interesting piece of technology that we've developed. The other component is what we refer to as <coughs> Xlayer. And Xlayer is the component of, Xlayer is the technology that allows you to <coughs> relate application performance with underlying uh, infrastructure layers. So you can now understand whether an application issue you're seeing is because of network issues, because of DNS, because of BGP, and tying all these together in a very seamless manner. Uh, Ricardo would be covering some aspects of how the behind the scenes stuff of Xlayer is done as well. And I will cover a brief overview of Xlayer in the product demo as well. <coughs> The final component of our technology, which involves, you know, once you identify where the problem is, you want to be able to fix it. And so the final component that we're working on is sharing the information seamlessly across cloud providers or service providers, so on and so on. And interactive sharing is the ability for, the, gives enterprises an ability to see, share what they see with cloud providers or with service providers. 
And not only can you share a snapshot, but you can actually share a live feed of information so they can always get this data. Um, and again, this will be clear once we start to go into a demo and I can show through what this actually means. Uh, but for now, just think of it as the same screen that you see on an enterprise appearing on the cloud provider side. So coming to sort of what would exactly this Thousand Eyes do, right, and what are the components of our solution? Uh, we are a SaaS service, so essentially we have two key data collection components. We have a public infrastructure which runs at different parts. Uh, we've placed different parts across the globe, and they would be able to do periodic measurements to a specific external facing asset. So think of it as, let's say, login.salesforce.com. So periodically testing a certain asset from different parts of the world. Uh, what we're doing very differently from a lot of other external monitoring solutions here is we do not treat the internet as a black box. We actually focus a lot on the network layer, and we're doing lots of measurements to characterize the L3 performance, bandwidth, et cetera, uh, hop by hop metrics as well as understand how they relate to BGP changes and so on. So that's really sort of the focus of our external view. And then the other aspect of our technology is a private agent, which you can deploy very easily within branch offices as an enterprise. And so we have private agents going a few different ways. Uh, you can deploy it in branch offices as an enterprise, or you could also put it in data center environments as a SaaS provider to give sort of first mile visibility. So a few different implementations. But think of private agents as something that can really help you customize the entire environment that you want data collection from. And one of my favorite stories is you know, putting a private agent on my flight to New York so I could start to see why I was having all these slow page loads and so on. So that was, was a fun exercise. <laughs> so given your background and given all the network expert, networking expertise that's is in this room, I'm sure after listening to all this, the, the primary question that you guys have in your mind is, what does all this have to do with all the superheroes? Right? <laughs> <laughs> the reality is there are two characteristics of superheroes that you know, appeal to us. One of them is that superheroes are always doing stuff that humans cannot do. Right? So it's something really, really out of the ordinary. And uh, superheroes are almost always delusional. And so these are two characteristics of all our employees. <laughs> and we like to think of us as tackling problems that are really hard. And uh, each employee here at Thousand Eyes gets an alter ego. They get small action figures that they can put on their desk and informally can be called by the, the, the superhero name. So that's really part of our culture. And we encourage people to be as adventurous as, as they want to be. What's, what's your superhero name? Silver Surfer. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's up here. Oh, after a while, like, you run out of good superheroes, so someone's got to have a bad one here. Yeah. Who's got the worst Who's superhero Aquaman? here? <laughs> Who's <up>. Aquaman? <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of the incentives yeah. of coming in early in <laughs> <laughs> So if you have, I'm sure there's some people Who's got watching. Robin? Who, who has Robin? Who's stuck with the Teen Titans? Yeah. And I want to be Banana Man. <laughs> um, no one's going to fight you for that. It should be Mr. Either. Clean. <laughs> Mr. Clean, thank you. That's yeah, and we try to stick with Marvel, so that's also something we're trying to do. Um, sorry, DC fans, for now. <laughs> All right, um, these are some of our customers, and again, unfortunately, we, there are a lot of customers we can't talk about. Uh, we have lots of financials that we're working with. Uh, we have lots of you know, big brands that you're aware of, but not, are not out here. And our hope is over the next six to 12 months, we are able to get more of these people to come out and talk about how they use Thousand Eyes. Uh, the financials, especially, as you know, are, are really, really hard. But uh, you know, like I said, we always support our customers. So they, if you just track my behavior, you'll be able to see what our customers are. You know, just recently, I started increasing my credit card spending by a crazy amount to support one of our customers. So, um, so you can the, check the behavior NSA like that, that uh, yeah. <laughs> can, can hint to uh, stuff. And, and I'm, I'm using slides today, for example. What about non big customers? Any in that you know, mid-market or just average enterprise space? Yes, so we are tackling. And one of the things we wanted to do when we uh, wanted to tackle this problem was 
we didn't want to go to enterprises and say, we're going to help you keep an eye on the SaaS providers, because we think of it slightly differently. We think of it as bringing the two people to together. And so we tackled, we went after the SaaS and cloud providers first. And now, in the last three months, with the private agents, we're tackling the enterprise sales. So we have small to medium enterprises like the Canadian Real Estate Association and like a small financial, Green Hill, which is based out of East Coast. So we have several of those. And I think those are also great customers to go after and you know, represent the, the average sort of mid-market problems that exist. 